All right, or I'm ready. Anybody else is. There you go. Obviously, every year it's hard to say goodbye, but is this year's group of seniors uh, specifically difficult to say goodbye to, especially how they've performed in winning this senior class in history? I think the the we were talking about this a little bit last night. I think the the so much of what has to do with how special these guys are has zero to do with wins and losses, has zero to do with football, and and everything to do with who they are and and the relationships that that uh, are sort of kind of distilled when it when it comes to to football. Um, but just a bunch of great guys, you know, and a bunch of guys that that we've all known their entire careers. Recruit, you know, everybody that's kind of going through here. We've we've recruited, and we know, you know, we know everything about them. And they know, you know, it's a, it's been a great uh, run. And then, oh, by the way, football. You know, the wins, the wins, and 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 a, and a couple of losses in there. But just a great, a great bunch of guys. Mark uh, Hronis was saying last night that this started after the Alamo Bowl. Any success you've had this year that he got together with some other players after the Alamo Bowl and they kind of focused. Did you sense some changes during the offseason? This was a really focused group. Um, is that kind of paying benefits now? I think so. I mean, it was we, you know, we we tweaked some things every off season and 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 made some changes of trying to be a bigger, faster, stronger group, more functional group, uh, particularly in his group on the offensive line. Some some uh, changes in our off season program, and then just the the mindset of of controlling everything you can control, and and you know that's something that everybody talks about, uh, and they learned it the hard way last year of thinking about somebody else's you know result in this and the other and not you know maybe losing sight uh of of a couple things that that they controlled and uh and to their credit have competed like heck in that vein hey, um it was hard to see ronis on the sideline but um especially on senior day but i noticed that you had hamani stevens at center and um i think it was brenner at left guard and um i was wondering to know pending Grassi's return, what the the offensive lineup was going to be. Is it going to be a week to week thing, or did you find the one of your dreams, or um, what did you what did you? It's uh, it's kind of like a dial, you know. It's just we spin the dial and see what comes up week to week. It, it seems like right now, and those guys have done a great job. They've had a great attitude. They've worked really hard. Uh, Hamani did a great job last week in practice of of really setting the tempo for that group, just of literally getting set and pushing pushing the tempo, and not you know not missing a beat. Do you miss you know this or that about the other guy? Maybe, but you have to have to push forward and push on, and it takes those guys to do that in practice to kind of prove to everybody else. That hey, we're we're ready to go and 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 you know try to try to fill their shoes as best as possible, uh, and then yeah, from going on from there, we'll certainly figure out. Uh, uh, it's uh, been a week to week existence uh, in that in that uh, position room. Andrew, miss tackling was such a topic early in the season. It seemed like you would express some frustration that you wanted to get better and better. How has it been in the last two three weeks or th this last game? Um, it seems like. Obviously, the way the points would, would mm -hmm. you're allowing would seem like there have been fewer, but I wasn't sure what the tape shows. It's been better. I mean, there were s certainly a few things yesterday where uh, it was more of misfits than missed tackles. We had a couple creases there. Uh, they got us in an unba a, couple, uh, a couple unbalanced looks. One time, I think we thought it was unbalanced and, and were misaligned to it um, and, and just, you know, simple communication things. We had lost leverage the one time the guy had the long run in the – uh, third quarter, uh, kind of on the press box sideline there, just lost leverage and and you know th those things can can bite you. Miss tackles obviously can bite you. We've been we've been better, uh, but uh, you know winning covers up a lot of those things. Going back to the offensive line, you did get a guy back, and Andre. How do you feel like he did? And then also the tight ends. You said mm -hmm. you had to go back and look at film for them. Okay, I think uh, in reverse order there, the tight ends played okay. It was great to see Evan Bayless find the end zone and in a meaningful game for him and a guy that's worked really hard and just needs, I think, that le little boost of, of confidence. Uh, you know, we, we have a ton of belief in his ability and just a, some guys need to, you know, visualize it and they can do it. Some guys need to visualize it and then practice it and then do it and then believe they can, you know, it's just a you never kind of know that that mix of what it's going to take for each guy uh and then uh johnny munt and koakai both played uh in limited roles and did did fairly well um what was the other part 
Andre. Andre, yeah. Andre uh, was rusty. I, I know he would say that himself. He did some some really good things, and he did some things that he looked like he was back out there for the first time in a while. Uh, some of it, again, is just trusting trusting that everything's functioning well. Uh, some of it was identifying things, but but uh, uh, you know, definitely a guy that's gonna he'll be a hundred times better next week. Just that that just knocking off that rust and and reassuring himself that hey, this is gonna be okay. Any questions from Gary or Chantel or Jason? Uh, yeah, Mark, I know you're going to talk about it a lot this week, but, um, you know, you, you grew up with this Civil War and everything, and you've been a part of it for a long time, But and it is just another game on the schedule. Well, does it mean a little bit more to you personally, maybe? <laughs> well, in my current job, I can't get personal, you know, in, in terms of, of, of that part of it. But, yeah, I absolutely grew up in a in a – split community you would say of of in coos bay there's there's allegiances on both sides and friends and family on both sides uh and so that that um the back and forth banter that lasted uh throughout the year you know i know what that means i know what it means to live in whatever bend oregon and and have have the 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 con for the rest of the year Go ahead, Ryan. Mark, how do you manage the schedule coming off an emotional win, and then you have the Civil War, and then a holiday mixed in? Kind of, how do you manage yeah. the week? Yeah, it's been, uh, you know, again, kind of a year-long process of how we've tried to to plan things out, and so far, so good. Uh, this week is a is a quote unquote normal week, with the exception of the of the holiday, in terms of how we're going to work, uh, and we're going to get done. Uh, we're going to move our meetings up until the, er, the early afternoon that we'd normally do on Thursday night and then get our, our players and our coaches and our staff a chance to have a, a as normal of, of Thanksgiving as possible. We'll make sure all of our players have a, have a place to go. We'll have a lot of families in town, uh, not only for the game, but for Thanksgiving. Then our banquet is on uh, Sunday. And so we'll have that, you know, all, all ramrodded into to a 72-hour period. Do you want to give the microphone back to Warren? No, he's, but he's hold got his on. personal microphone there. Oh, I'm sorry. Hey, this is Andrew, hold on. The uh, screen passes are, again, something that you felt like at, in post-game sessions here and there that kind of hurt you guys a little bit. Mm -hmm. Is there a pattern to what teams are seeing from your defense, or do you feel like you guys are getting better? Um, yes and no. I mean, screen, screens are kind of like, you know, double moves. You know, they're like they're a shot. You know, and, it, and it's either a big gain or it, the ball's dirted at the running back's legs or it's, you know, you're tackled for no gain. It's very rarely a six-yard gain, you know. It's usually a boom or bust type of situation. They had, you know, a couple booms and a couple busts. Uh, but as far as what we were supposed to do on the play, we had one time where a guy, his eyes were just wrong and he could have rallied to the ball a little bit faster or a little bit sooner and, and mitigated some of the yardage. But, uh, uh, you know, that, that's one of those things where if you're going to rush the passer, if you're going to be a great pass rushing team, you're going to give up some, some screen game. And, you know, you have to balance those, those you know, kind of wins and losses. Warren? Mark, 42 rush attempts, I think, and 32 pass attempts last night. Is, is that kind of in the ballpark or is, is the 40 rush attempts kind of where you want to be? I know it's all situational. Yeah, it, it is all situational. I mean, we, we go into a game and we have a, a plan, I think, very um, generally of, of, of what we want to do. Um, and and it's, it's certainly of, of how we're going to start the game is, is basically 50-50, basically. Um, but then from there, it's how are they playing us? What, you know, what are we seeing? Is it this or that? Um, you know, see you know seeing how we're how we're holding up in protection or how we're blocking all the you know there's so many factors that go into it um as as to how the game plays out obviously score uh time and score is going to affect some of that uh as as well uh but you know our our mix was good our execution was okay um and and so that's a good a good problem considering the outcome is there on either one of those is there room for improvement i guess there's always room for improvement but is, is there Maybe in the rushing game, would you like to see more? Oh yeah, there ton, a ton. I mean, we, you know, it, it's it's funny. Sometimes we 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 block two people, and Royce makes one guy miss, breaks a tackle, and it's a nine yard gain, and that's a you know a great run play. It's you know, and and there there are so many things. Or you know, Marcus pulls the ball, and they they misfit it, and he runs for a touchdown. So there's a lot of things that that 
that on both sides of the 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 coin of 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 the run game and the pass game that uh, you know missed a couple protections at at guard missed you know had a couple physical breakdowns had a couple mental you know just all all those there's a million things in a game like that that uh, you know the quarterback might just reset and make a throw and and two guys need to have better technique or what you know whatever it is and the the the, the key to it though is having a group of guys that comes in today and tomorrow and looks at it and goes, man, yes, that, you know, I, I need to improve that. Boom, boom, boom. We need to fix that and, and, and move on. Uh, what was Tyner's status on Saturday and moving forward? If, if he's unavailable, what do you guys do at running back behind him, uh, behind Royce? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he is, he is literally day to day. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, we're going to do kind of what we did in this game of, of a mix and match of, of between, uh, uh, Kenny Bassett, uh, Royce, Byron. Uh, there's, there's, uh, you know, some other guys that Charles has done some things in the backfield. So some guys that, that are multi-purpose guys. I forgot to, have I, I'm in the plays of the week yet. Have I, the special team, we had a, too many, too many indec indecisive coaches this afternoon. So we have three co players of the game on special teams, jo uh, Jonathan Lloyd and, and Kenny Bassett. The special team scout of the week was Jalen Jelks, who's been doing a great job for us on uh, uh, the scout defense as well. The offensive players of the game were, were Charles Nelson and Byron Marshall. Byron had an, a huge block on um, Royce's first run, took out about three guys, did some great things in the run game that, that kind of go unnoticed. Um, Charles Nelson did some really good things in run and pass. And John Kenyon was our scout. And then defensively, Tony Washington and Troy Hill. And the scout of the week was Lane Roseberry. Questions, Gary, Chantel, Jason. Uh, yeah, Mark, yesterday, uh, Peronis was talking about how, you know, we might not know Royce as well as like Marcus, but he said character-wise they're pretty similar. I wonder if you could comment on that side of him and just on, on the year he's had as a true freshman. Yeah, he's, uh, they are very similar. Uh, character type guys and that's that's you know in in as we found out yesterday that's like sainthood or something something in 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 our world but yeah royce has been awesome uh all throughout the recruiting process just a guy and a family that that are rock solid a very humble guy he's probably he's probably more outgoing at this stage i think than marcus was uh you know he'll look you in marcus would look you in the eye but he wouldn't enjoy it uh but royce i think looks you in the eye and does enjoy it but they're you know very very similar guys which is a huge compliment does, to both of them does he remind you of anyone Running wise, and so you've been at Oregon. Any comparison, or is he Dave Williford? <laughs> He's a bulldog, then. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, everybody talks about Jonathan Stewart. I wasn't here when Jonathan Stewart was here. I was on the business end of Jonathan Stewart, and he was really good. Um, uh, but I, you know, I don't know. I'm horrible at those comparisons. Don't ask me about stats or com comparisons. Hey. Hey, Mark. How's that for an answer? Yes, sir. Hey, Mark. Uh, I, I don't know if you've had a chance to watch Arizona State at Oregon State tape or read about it or hear about it, but that was a you know, that was a highly ranked team going in there, and not only was it frigid, it looks like, but, but you know, Oregon State sort of persevered and won that game in the second half. Uh, how do you go in as a highly ranked team, Mark, and, and sort of really uh, – Try to try to not be upset in, in that sort of environment, like Arizona State was. You prepare like heck, you know, and that that's that's it. If you read some of the stuff that came out of that week, it was boy on Tuesday we should have, boy on Monday we should have, and and again going back to to I think uh, I'm not sure if it was Ryan or Warren's question about. Uh, a long time ago, but just controlling what we can control. And yeah. we, we don't control Oregon State's mindset. I know it's going to be, uh, they're going to be fired up and ready to play and rocking and rolling, and that'll be a great atmosphere, uh, as it always is for, for, for game day. Uh, and we need to have a great Sunday. We need to have a great Monday. We need to have a great Tuesday that, that leads up to, uh, you know, uh, our, our best showing on Saturday. Just going back to the running backs really quick, um, even though the game was a blowout and it made sense for a bunch of the senior guys to get a lot of touches, was Ford and Bassett, were they going to see their fair in their last game, at, fair share of touches in their last game at Autzen, no matter what? Or was that 
because of the circumstances of the game. That was the time and score. I mean, we have a ton of respect for Colorado. I think those guys are playing their playing their tails off. Coach McIntyre is doing a great job. And we didn't go into that game going, hey, at this time we're going to put in this guy because we're going to be up by X. Uh, we, we, you know, gave them, as we give everybody, our absolute best shot. And it was great, it was great you know, by the same token, it was great for those guys to be able to get in there. Um, just real quick, going back to the offensive line, but I had noticed uh, there was some early pressure on Marcus in the first half, and he, I think they even got a sack that got to him once. And how much do you chalk that up to individual kind of adjustments being made, or is that Pelham um, talking to him, or both? How much is that on an individual making an adjustment there? You were talking about pressure on Marcus, Marcus correct? Yeah, okay. for the, the offensive linemen, how much are they? Okay. Um, it, it was, you know, that the one time we, we had the, the significant pressure was a, an assignment error by one of the guards. Uh, and then there, again, a couple of things where it's technique, a couple of things where, uh, you know, physically didn't do a, do a great job. Uh, there, there were, you know, it's a little bit of everything, um, get, getting, getting the ball out. There's all, there's always throwing the football is an 11 man job. You know, there's route timing, spacing, all those, all those kind of things, protection, uh, Communication is a huge deal in pass protection, but yeah, I wish it was. I wish Coach Pelham could tell the other team not to rush. That would be good too, though. Warren, Mark, I was talking to Coach Neal um, later last week, and he was pretty candid about the evolution of Oregon football and how far it's come. I think seven years in a row now, double-digit wins. But he was talking about when Coach Kelly first got here that there was an edict that all of you laid down that you were going to have the best practice every single day that you could when you went out on the field. Maybe if you could talk about that and just that philosophy and how that has morphed into the success of what Oregon football is. And he also said that you now have really put your stamp, your individual stamp on, on this as well. And I, he didn't say what it was, but he, and maybe you could talk about that too. It's rubber. It's uh, waxed. And then he's, uh, I think in, in the simplest of terms, it's our, our whole, every, every element of everything we do, it's not about being perfect. It's about being better. And, and it's that simple. It's not, you know, it's not complicated and it's really hard. You know, it's really hard to go out and have a better Monday tomorrow than you had last week, than the other week before, you know, and so on. It's hard, you know. I mean, you guys all write and do that better than everybody else, so you do it better the next day than you did before. But it's one thing to just say that. It's a completely other thing to do it and then go out in front of 80,000 people and millions on TV and, and execute it. And our guys have been committed, uh, you know, virtually without exception to that, you know, kind of dogma. Um, and and it's, it's, it really is that simple. Is there a learning curve to get the young guys to kind of oh, yeah. to that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And that, that's the hardest thing is, 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 I think, twofold. Making sure in recruiting you identify the guy that wants to be a part of that kind of thing. And, I, and we tell them, and we're very honest, that it's exceptionally difficult. It's hard. It's really hard, unconventionally hard. And we're going to support you unconventionally because of it. Uh, and then also the, the, the shorter the time lapse from you, you showing up to jumping in the system, the better, you know, for, for guys show up and they're, well, I used to power clean this way. And my, you know, I, I played man coverage like this and I studied like this and I did this. And then a year and a half later, they figure out, okay, yeah, that you were right about everything. You know, that's a year and a half of meh, you know, versus if you can make that 14 seconds by the time you show up on campus and jump into the process, it's going to happen a lot faster for, for everybody. Andrew. Um, with teams like Colorado or Oregon State, where you haven't lost to Oregon State since these guys were even got on campus, a lot of these seniors, um, what are the challenges of kind of instilling the threat in these these guys who they haven't lost to these teams in forever? You, so obviously you, you live in a week to week mindset. I know this, yeah. but how do you kind of instill that we haven't lost to them since 2007, and yet this is something that can happen? You, we just we just never talk in those terms, you know. We never talk like like after the game. Somebody's asking me about like I had no idea that Royce Freeman had a thousand yards or Marcus had this and that. I had no idea about that, and you know we use some of that in recruiting. And I need to brush up on my statistics, but it, it's just have a great day, 
and and have you know like we talked about it's it's that simple but that's really hard it's really hard to block out everybody talking about okay you're you're guaranteed in this game and you're guaranteed in that game and these guys you know here's your opponent and this is going to happen and it, no it's not you know you have to have a great monday and and the challenge of doing that is really hard you know uh and you know talking about a, a pep talk at game time i saw a little bit of thing the other day about pep talks or whatever before the game you need to have a pep talk to have a great monday and a great tuesday and a great wednesday saturday if, you know if you're not ready to go on saturday we we screwed up in recruiting you know and 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 that that i think is much more you know significant any other questions on the phone and none. You have another one, Warren. Yeah, just real okay. quick. Uh, did you get a chance to rewatch uh, Charlie Pape's the piece last night? And <laughs> <laughs> did uh, what did you think of that? And I think we all broke Twitter and, and with, with, with how quickly he became this sensation. But did you get a chance to watch that? I haven't had a chance to to watch it. I try not to look at myself. It's not good for the viewer. It's not good for anyone. Uh, no, but that was that was hilarious. Yeah. Uh, were there four things or three things? I think math is the fourth. I think maybe we have to. No, I don't know. It's a joke, Warren. It's not a funny joke necessarily. But... Did you know? Did you know the Pape family? Is that yeah, a... yeah, okay. yeah. Sure. Great people. Yeah, he was probably planted by his dad. Yeah. We thought that. <laughs> I have a question in the back here. Charlie. Following up on that, a lot of our viewers want to know, which do you prefer, Jesus Girls or Marcus Mariota? <laughs> <laughs> Your viewers will have to wait. Uh, okay, I think that concludes today. Exactly. Right? <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks.